Today I'm going to be speaking the next two weeks uh, and, and got a little series that I'm going to do. Um, those of you that are concerned, um, I just want to make mention that uh, our dog is okay. <laughs> He's not hot anymore. Some of y'all aren't. No, go on my Facebook page, you'll see what I'm talking about. Uh, the mustard trick did work. So, uh, so again, it's okay. It's okay. It's all right to laugh. I believe in laughter. I think laughter is like a good medicine. Uh, and I think part of the Christian's problem is we don't laugh enough. I think we need to laugh. I think we ought to have a good time. I think we ought to enjoy the journey. I want to enjoy the journey. So again, we're so honored that you're with us. Don't forget, immediately following service over at Cambria Park, uh, we're doing our picnic. We had it scheduled for Memorial Day weekend, got rained out, uh, but we're doing it today, and God has blessed us with beautiful weather. It's not supposed to be that hot this afternoon, and so everybody is invited to come to the Cambria Park. We're in the First Pavilion. If you're driving into Cambria from the south, right on your ride, and so we want you to come uh, and enjoy a time of fellowship with us, so please don't forget that. Another thing I want to mention real quick before we get into the Word, there will be no Wednesday night service this week. We've got a group of kids and people going to kids camp, uh, plus it's the third right before the fourth, so there will be no service uh, this Wednesday night. Go on and grab your Bible or whatever you have the Bible on. It could be your phone. It can be iPad, whatever. And I want you to hold it up. And they're going to put our confession up on the screens. And as Pastor Derek said a while ago, join with me. Don't make me say it by myself. This is my Bible. I am what it says I am. I can do what it says I can do. Today I will be taught the Word of God I boldly confess my mind is alert, my heart is receptive, and I will never be the same. I am about to receive the incorruptible, indestructible, ever-living seed of the Word of God. I will never be the same. In Jesus' name, somebody say amen. <clears throat> we're never going to be the same after today. Today is what we're considering Freedom Sunday, and as I put this, these couple of series together. It was actually, or a couple of messages together, it was actually supposed to be a three-part, so I tried to, to work it into two weeks, and, and, uh, but I promise you I'm not going to take liberty and go long with you today. Uh, but as I begin to go over this, this, what I'm going to talk about for the next couple of weeks can bring freedom into your life. How many of you want freedom in your life? Because I need to know who I'm looking at here. I want freedom. Now, here's what I know. If you're in bondage in any area of your life, you're not in freedom. I want freedom in every area of my life. And so I really believe that this word today is going to help us. And so for two weeks, I just want to talk to you about the heart of the matter. Because how many of you know you can do something and it not really be in your heart, but your heart, out of the abundance of what you say, your heart speaks. Out of the abundance of what you do, your heart speaks. And, and so for the next couple of weeks, I just want to talk to you on the heart of the matter. Now, most of you know me. Some of you do not know me, but most of you do. And, and in this, I just want to say, I will always tell you the truth. I know you're hearing things, you're seeing things in the Christian world today, but a man standing before you today, I will always tell you the truth. The Bible tells me to be instant in season and out of season to preach the word even when it's not popular. So see, I don't get to choose. I don't get to get up here and say, well, I'm going to extract that out of the word of God. Let, let me help you. If it's in this book, then I'm going to preach it. It talks about hell. Hell is real and it is hot and sin is real and sin is not going to enter there. And so I, I will be honest with you. I will preach the truth. I will do what the word of God says. Now, hopefully you got, grabbed a hot sheet when you came in. It's just a fill-in. If you did not get one, please raise your hand. Uh, one of our staff members will make you uh, or get you one where you can take notes along because there's some notes in here that I think will help us uh, in being set free of this matters of the heart. And, and so there's three things that the Bible calls seed. And here's your first fill-ins. Three things the Bible calls seed. God calls the word seed. In other words, you can get something started just by saying it. 
There's power in your words. You can get, you say, oh, no, no. You, you, you say, well, give me an example. Okay, I'll give you an example. Wintertime especially. Five days in advance, the weather stations tells you that there's a winter storm coming. I, I heard that so many times last year. And guess what? It never came. But their words got something started. People ran out and got milk and eggs and bread. Why would you get that? I would get potato chips, candy bar. <laughs> but you can get something started. There's, there, and I've preached on this before, but it's so true. There's power in your words, in the words you speak. Let, let me help you. And I'm, I'm just going to throw some of this at you. If you're all the time speaking negative, then guess what's going to happen in your life? Negativity is going to come into your life. The second thing, the Bible calls decisions seed. Decisions are seed. Whatsoever a man soweth, that so shall he reap. Some people wonder why they reap certain things. I, I know, because you sowed certain things. And so he, he calls decisions, the decisions. So my decisions are creating something in my life that will later come back to me. You make decisions. I always say this, direction or, or uh, direction, not intention, determines your destination. So whatever you decide, the direction you decide to go in Guess what? That's going to come back to visit you. You know, it's crazy. People a lot of times will think because they don't have just instantaneous uh, 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 trouble out of something or, or, or consequences, they say, oh, it's not. Her. Let me help you. The day's going to come. It will come back to visit you. It, it will. I'm just trying to help you out. Then the Bible calls money seed. So, my investments that I make will later come back to visit me. Come on, I'm trying to set people free today. My investments that I make will later come back and visit me. In Malachi, God doesn't just talk about the tithe. He says this. He said, if you tithe, I will make sure you bear fruit. And I underline this, in due season. How many of you know in life, a lot of times timing is everything. He said, it's going to, to come in due season. King James puts it this way. Neither shall your vine cast her fruit before the time. S some people never get the big blessing in their life because they're always getting little premature ones. Because it's coming before it's time. And, and, and so th there's also people, and just bear with me. I know what some of you are thinking. Bear with me. I'm trying to help you get free in some areas of your life. There are also people who tithe and don't see any fruit. Th they don't see anything out of it. We have to understand, though, tithing alone will not make up for you doing wrong in 20 other areas of your life. People will say, man, I've been, I've been tithing for a year, Pastor, and my life is still in a mess. Then you start asking them questions and you find out that tithing is the only thing they've been doing right. It's quiet. I know nobody's going to sit by me at the picnic. I'll be okay. <laughs> you, you cannot do one right thing and compensate for a dozen other wrong things. What? You say, give me an example. Okay, I'm going to give you an example. <clears throat> Pull up to a drive thru Yeah, I'll tell you what. I'll take, give me two Big Macs. I don't want, do you have supersized fries or just large? Okay, give me the largest fry you have. What kind of pies do you have here? Okay, give me two of those. Yes, sir, what would you like to drink? Oh, just give me a water. I'm trying to watch my sugar intake. <laughs> or give me a diet. You might as well just go for it. <laughs> just give me, get, get, 
And you say, Pastor, what, what do you say? Here, here's what I'm saying. We can't do one right thing and expect it to compensate for everything else. The Bible says this. It says you prosper as your soul prospers. Now, again, I, I'm going by this. This is what I have to go by. Okay? So, so, again, if you're wanting to go outside of this, I won't do that. But I will stay in this book. So the Bible says you prosper as your soul prospers. And your soul is this. It is your mind, your emotions, and your will. It's your mind, your emotions, and your will. In other words, prosperity in life, in money, whether it be in jobs, in careers, can parallel, don't miss this, to you increasing in intelligence. Increasing wisdom. You're getting a little bit smarter about things and knowing how to make good decisions. You're increasing in that knowledge. Because hear me, your marriage cannot get better until you know more about being married. You can't be a better father until you know more about being a better father. You can't get your money out of trouble until you know more about finances. That's why we're doing FPU, Financial Peace University. We offered that free of charge for people that say, I want to get my money out of trouble. Okay, we're going to help you do so. Because the more you know about it, the more it's going to help you. He said this, he said, I wish above all things that you'd be in health and prosper just as your soul prospers. Though, so there is a parallel there in you prospering in your mind and in your wallet. So your money right now is how you think about money. Now, again, we don't like this, but it's true. Your money is how you think about money. You get a big tax refund. Let's, let's say you got a monster tax refund. You, you don't need to go out and buy a 150-inch TV. You need to pay off some debt. I'm trying to help you. Don't hate me for it. You, you, need to pay, you need to put back for your kid's college fund. You, you need to do some of those things. You don't, you don't need to say, well, man, we've got this, we've got $10,000. We can go spend it on anything we want. Because here's the thing. Think about this for a minute. God does not think spend. God thinks invest. Checks were never meant to be cash. They were meant to be deposited. Somebody say something. In Mark chapter 4, Jesus talks about good ground. And most of the emphasis when he talks about it is on the seed. The fact is that if you get seed into good ground, if you get it in good ground, the right ground, you don't have to pray over it. You don't have to anoint it. You don't have to jump up and down on it. You don't have to dance on it. If you get seed into good ground, what is inside the seed will produce for you naturally. Because the potential is already inside the seed. And people will say, well, well why do I need to give to this church? They, they've got everything they need. I mean, they've got a beautiful auditorium. They've got all of this. Now, right now, I've asked Pastor Israel, he's going to hand out to some seed to about three people. And so do it quick. We... We want to get this garden planted. And so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just give you a little sermon illustration today. Here in these containers, I don't know if you can see it that good or not. Israel, if you would, hold that other one kind of up without dumping it. Because you haven't cleaned up if you do. <laughs> Behind door number one, <laughs> our model Israel is holding up good topsoil. It's full of nutrients. It's full of everything it's going to need. Fertilizer, everything. In my hand, I've just got some dirt clods and rock. Nothing in it. Okay, thank you, sir. Now, Israel, Pastor Israel handed out some seed. I don't know who he handed it out to. 
the ones that have the seed in your hand, I want you to think for a moment. The seed that you have in your hand, you are going to have to live on for the next year. What you have in your hand, you, you're going to want it to produce because you're going to have to live on it for the next year. Now, here's what I want you to do. Those of you that got seed, I want you to come and sow the seed. You can choose. You can choose the clay and the rock, or you can choose the nutrients that are full, or the soil that's full of nutrients. I think it's growing already. You say, okay, Pastor Bob, what's the deal? I, I mean, and I didn't tell them. You can ask them. I didn't, they didn't know nothing about this. I didn't, but here's what I noticed. Nobody ran to the needy ground. None of them. I didn't tell them they couldn't. I just said, what you have in your hand, you're going to need to live off of. You're going to need to survive. And so, the ground that was full of nutrients, they automatically just ran and put their seed into that. The needy ground that is really just rock and, and clay, nobody came to this ground. God told Abraham that he was going to bless him. He said, Abraham, I'm going to make your name great. In fact, the whole earth will be blessed through your blessing. He went on to say, I'm going to bless those who bless you. He tells this to Abraham. Why would anybody want to give Abraham something when he's the richest man on the planet? Why would I go give something to him? He's already the richest guy. Why, why would I do that? I mean, he is the richest man in the world, yet God made a statement. He said, you know what? I'm going to bless them that bless you. You say, well, that's not fair. We'll take it up with God. That's what God told him. He said, I'm going to bless you, them that bless you. Now, don't misunderstand, Pastor Day. I'm not saying that we shouldn't help people. It is the Christian's responsibility to help people. L let me say that again. It is the Christian responsibility to help people. Let, let me go on and say that again. It is the Christian responsibility that we help people. We need to help people. I think we need to be involved in helping people. I think if people have an addiction, then I think it should be taken care of through the church. Come on, some church folk help me today. If you have a marriage problem, I think that we ought to be able to take care of it through counseling, Christian counseling through the church. I think if there's needs, if people are hungry, I think that we should be able to take care of it through the church. I think it's our responsibility to do so. I, I think we should do that because we have to understand something. The kingdom is bigger than one hour on Sunday. Come on, it's bigger than one hour. So, so don't miss this. Again, please listen to me today. Don't miss it. It is our responsibility that God did not tell us that that's where our blessings are gonna flow from. He didn't say, if you, if you do that responsibility, I'm going to bless you. He did not say that. We ought to do it, but he didn't say that's where it's going to flow from. He told us that our blessings were going to flow when we put something into good ground. And so you are not only a sower of the seed. I'm talking to all of us today. You're not only to be a sower of the seed, but you're also to be a judge of good ground. You got to judge good ground because the Bible says some seed fell on thorny ground, some fell on stony ground. And when trouble came, guess what? Its roots had no depth. And so it, it could not last. When the, the sun came out, it scorched it. In Mark chapter four, there's four types of ground and three of those are bad. You, you can read it when you go home. They're bad. So, so let me throw this out. If you've got a little money put back for retirement and you say, I'm, gonna, I'm saving some money for retirement, you are not going to take that money and invest it in a guy 
that's doing investments, you're not going to invest with him that has lost money for the last 10 years. You're not going to say, well, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to go on and try him. I'm going to give him one more chance. You're, you're going to look for the guy that's made a ton of money. Right? I'm not going to invest. I, I'm going to look for the guy that's made money. If something is happening in this church and it is happening, then that means, you know what? This house is good ground. And if you're here and you say, oh, I don't think it's good ground, then you need to find somewhere. You need to find somewhere that you think's good ground. But as far as I'm concerned, I think this place is good ground. Because here's the thing, we need to help needs, I get that, but you know what? Your seed has got to get into good ground. We got to get it into good ground. Sometimes there are needs that are present, but they're not good ground. They're not good ground. Well, give me an example. Well, here's an example. You're not good ground if you take my $20 bill and you're going to use it to go buy a cheap bottle of wine. You might think you have a need, but I'm not investing in you for a blessing. Because you're not good ground when you're going to take it and do that. When I want a blessing, when I want a return on the gift... I have to look for what is fertile and what will produce. Why would you give $100 to your friend when you know all he's going to do is go out and buy drugs with that? You, you gave it to him and now you're waiting on God to bless you? That's bad ground. You say, man, this is so simple. Then why do we live like it's so hard? When you go home, again, look in Mark 4. The key for seed producing, he said, it fell on good ground. And when it did, the Bible says it produced 30, 60, and 100 fold. When it fell on good ground. Now, there are two extremes. And I've seen both of them in a church. I've grown up in this thing. And I've seen both of them in churches before. And one, one side of that extreme is where you go to a church and everybody's broke. Nobody has nothing. They're mad at the guy that does have something. And they have, they have felt that suffering is held as virtuous and having nothing means that you have reached a, 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 or established a level of holiness that nobody else is at. That's one extreme. Then you have another extreme. It's where a preacher gets up, and sometimes you see this with TV preachers especially. They get up, and they preach that everybody in the building can have a Rolls Royce if you just have enough faith. Well, let me confront that right now. Let, let me confront that. The first mistake that we have made is we have gone to social media to tell us what wealth is. We go back to the Bible and we preach this way to get that. So we've got a world definition and a biblical roadmap of how to get there. The Bible makes it clear. And the moment that we come to this understanding will be the moment that will free us up. And that is my goal today is to free you up. I want to free you up. How many... I'm not even going to ask because nobody will raise their hand. I want to walk in freedom. I want to walk in freedom, man. I, I'm not going to be embarrassed by that. I want to walk in freedom. I want stuff paid for. I don't want to have to worry about that. I want, I want to walk in freedom. Now, now, here's the thing. We're all equally loved in the eyes of God. And he's no respecter of person. But the Bible makes it clear. Every one of us operate in measures. And, and please don't, I know I've, I'm talking about money, and you go, oh, I'm shutting him down. Please don't do that. The, the Bible says you have a measure of faith. You, you have a measure of gift, a measure of talent, a measure of ability. And so God has distributed that, that out to us in measures. 
Anybody that preaches any different is not telling you the truth. He has given that to us in measures. That, you know, and, and I've heard this in the past. They'll get up and again on TV, and I, I just got to be honest, I don't really watch many TV preachers. If you do, that's fine. I'm just, I'm not into that. But I've heard him get up and say things, maybe not this radical, but almost, I've got a jet. And if you have enough faith, you can have a jet too. No, you can't. No, no, you can't. Because to accomplish your assignment, you might not need a jet. Don't miss that. To accomplish your assignment, you might not need it. So, so let, me, let me tell you what prosperity is. And I want you to write this down. If you haven't been taking notes, you ought to write it down. And I want you to go tell your friends. I'm going to give you a definition of what prosperity is. Prosperity is having everything you need to accomplish the assignment on your life. Prosperity is having everything you need to accomplish the assignment on your life. So it's not about cars, it's not about houses, it's not about boats, it's not about planes. It has nothing to do with that. If it takes a plane to fulfill what God has put on you as an assignment, then that is your prosperity potential to get a plane. If your assignment is a motorcycle ministry, and God said, well, I'm calling you to that. Then God is somehow going to make a way where you can get a motorcycle. Now, here's the thing. You have to contribute to it. You can't just sit back and say, well, somebody's going to drop me by a, a motorcycle. But you know what? I cannot use the Bible and get up in front of you and tell you that, you know what? When you leave today, everybody in here this week's going to get a Harley. I can't tell you that. Some of us wouldn't know what to do with a Harley if we got one. We'd have the helmet on sideways looking out the ear hole trying to see where we're going. So I can't get up and say that will happen. But prosperity is doing everything God wants you to do and never have, think about this, and never having to ask him or ask your finances for permission. I get so tired of preachers saying, what God has given me, he's going to give you. Well, here's the thing. What God has given me to fulfill my assignment might be a world of difference than what he's given you to fill your assignment. It might be totally different. However big your assignment is, God's going to give you everything you need to complete it. Whatever it is, whatever assignment that God has placed on your life. Again, it takes, you cannot build a skyscraper. I do a lot of woodworking out in my barn, but you know what? I can't build a skyscraper in the barn. It takes a lot different material, a lot different tools, and a lot different equipment than it does uh, building a skyscraper than it does for me to build a mailbox holder. And so, Whatever is in your potential, your assignment God has given you, then God will give that to you if you need it for your assignment. We have to understand something else. Blessings are on levels. There's different levels of blessing. Rolls Royce does not define blessing. I was going to use Grey Poupon in here, but I didn't think some of you would remember that. So some of you older ones, <laughs> you know exactly what I'm talking about. Rolls Royce does not define blessing. Just hear me out. I've talked about this before, but it's so powerful. To the guy who's homeless and it's 12 degrees outside and the ground is frozen and the wind is blowing, a shelter is a blessing. That's a blessing to him. He curled up in a sleeping bag surrounded by concrete walls and there's a single light that's hanging above him but the wind is off of him and he can lay there and look at God and say, thank you God for blessing me. To the people who are not homeless but they have never owned their own home 
and they walk into their first home and it's a little home, it's 800 square feet, but they walk in there and tears are running down their cheeks because they are thankful that on that level, God blessed them. And so we look, they look at God and they say, God, thank you so much for blessing us. To the guy that owned, owned his own home, but he finally got a promotion at work and he knocks down that first big account that he looks at God and he says, God, I want to thank you for that. To the corporate giant who got the merger to go through and he just saved 40,000 jobs, goes into the bathroom, he bends over the sink with tears running down his face saying, God, I thank you. Don't miss this. They are all thanking the same God. They are all saying, I'm blessed, but on different levels. You cannot say that the guy that's trying to find a warm night's sleep wasn't blessed because his comparison is not to the corporate giant. His comparison is where he was and he stepped up from where he was. Don't miss it. Some of you are comparing yourself to somebody that's way ahead and you're saying, well, I'm not blessed. You know what? You're, you're blessed. Because here's the problem. We want to skip 23 levels and when we don't skip 23 levels, we say, well, I'm tithing and it's not working. Hear me today. God is not a God of lottery. God is a God of levels. Faith to faith, glory to glory, precept upon precept. So he moves us in levels and dimensions. That, that's how we're moving. To the man who needed a warm blanket last night, he cannot do what the corporate giant can do. Now, maybe it's in his potential I mean, it could be in his potential. I'm not saying he never can do that. It might be in his potential, but you know what? He's going to have to fight some giants to get there. Number one, he's going to have to fight through personal finances. Getting his life in order. He, he's got to get things straight. He's got to hold down a job. And in every one of them, he's climbing. He's climbing a little bit higher and God is blessing him. Let me, let me just insert something here. Everybody needs to hear me. You need to keep climbing. Some of y'all quit climbing. Some of y'all, in fact, are sliding down the ladder. You need to keep climbing. Yeah, but I'm not where I want to be. No, but if you'll look back after a year or two, you're not where you used to be either. You, you need to keep climbing. You need to keep pushing. You need to keep saying, I'm not giving up. No, I might never have a jet. I might never have a Rolls Royce. I may never own a 3,000 square foot home, but you know what? I am blessed. I'm blessed beyond measure. Where I am right now, I am able to do the assignment that God has put on my life. So you cannot... Try to define what God has done for me by watching what he's done for you. Your assignment's different. It's not the same. Your season is different. Your time is different. We started out at a different place. We're not in the same place. We, you can't look at me and say, well, you know what? That, that's what? That's what God's gonna do for me. He might. But you might have to fight through some things. And so I'm praying. Here's my prayer. Here's my goal out of this two weeks. Here's my goal. Is I'm praying for the chains to be broken off of your finances. You say, why? Why? Because I, for one, you know what? In my life, I've struggled in the past with finances. And I know what it can do to you. I know. I'm no, I'm no stranger to that. I know. And so I'm, I'm praying for that. Because it will free you up. I'm believing for breakthroughs. But you know what? I'm afraid so many times we sit back in the easy chair and pull that 
lever back and kick back and we say, okay, God, give me a breakthrough. That's not how it works. You have to participate. Don't forget whatsoever man soweth, that's what you're going to reap. If you don't sow anything, guess what? You cannot do nothing and expect a breakthrough. You cannot do nothing and expect a breakthrough. If you leave here today, hear pastor clearly, and you get your first hot meal, you need to realize you're blessed. If you get your first hot meal, you, you need to realize you're blessed. You might, you might be here today and you look around and you say, man, all these people pulled up in these nice cars and, and I'm in this rusted out, man, the vehicle sputtering. But you know what? When you go to start the car and you turn that key and that car starts, you need to thank the Lord because you're blessed. See, we try and compare. No, no you, you, need, you need to thank him. You, you might be here today and you're going to go home to a one-room apartment, but you need to say, thank you, Lord. I'm blessed. Hear this very clearly. I want you to, I want you to listen to it, but I want you to hear this. If you are thankful on this level, then you've got another level coming. If you're thankful on the level you are, then you got another level coming. And if you're here today and you say, you know what, Pastor? I'm thankful and blessed right where I am. I want you to stand to your feet and I want you to give him some praise right now in the house. If you're here and you say, you know what? I'm thankful for where I am right now. I'm thankful for where I am right now. Come on, give him some more prayer. It's all right. It's all right. We got time. We got time. Be thankful for where you are right now. And you know what the cool thing is seeing you all do this? I see another level coming for you. Because you're thankful at the level you're at. You say, you know what? I may not be where I want to be, but man, I'm not where I used to be. And so you know what I've done? I refuse to give in to today's economic situation. Because here's the thing. If God never does another thing for me, I'm blessed. If he never does one more thing for me, I'm blessed. I'm blessed. And so here's what I want to do today. I want you to bow your heads because I don't want anybody to leave here feeling condemned. I don't want you to leave here feeling like you're not blessed. I, I want to pray over you right now. Here's one of the first things. Again, just as, as, as the, maybe the person that, that slept and found a place to stay out of the cold, his potential might be there, but he's got to go through some things. You know what? The potential God has placed in you, it's there. You just might need to step into the, the, some things. Here's one of the first things you need to step into if you have not, and that's giving your life to Jesus Christ. That, that's your first step. You need to say, God, I give my life to you. I need you to forgive me of my sins, and he will do so. And so if you're here today, as every head is bowed and every eye is closed, and you say, you know what, Pastor? I want to start that journey, and I want to give my life to Christ. I want you to raise your hand in the air. Just raise it up. Say, man, that's me. That's me. See, because here's the, here's the thing. Right now, it's up to you. I've done what God told me to do, and he said, now it's in their court. And so you simply raise your hand and say, God, I give my life to you. I give my life to you. And then there's next steps to make because God blesses on levels. And so I want to pray over you right now. Heavenly Father, we come to you today. And Lord, I thank you for these precious people. And Lord, I know that every one of them have great potential inside of them. 
Lord, help them to continue to climb and climb and climb, Lord. And Lord, help them, give them strength, Lord. Give them knowledge that they need to complete the assignment you have given them. Lord, I speak blessings over their families and their finances. And Lord, I pray that chains are broken off of them. Lord, I pray for everyone that is struggling, maybe in their marriage, maybe in an addiction, whatever it might be. Lord, that your spirit flows upon them. And so, Lord, we thank you for that right now. And Lord, we praise you and we give you glory and honor in Jesus' name. Everybody said amen. Right now, our prayer teams are going to come up. If you're here and you have, it, it doesn't matter what it is. It could be sickness. It could be, it could be finances. It could be marriage. It could be just wanting a new job. It could be whatever. They're just here. They're not going to get personal and, and ask you all kinds of things. We just want to offer to pray with you before you leave today. And so we, we're, they're standing here. And, and as we, here's what we're doing. We're, we, we're trying a new thing. And I said, Pastor Israel and I were talking. He said, why don't we leave on a high? Why, why don't we leave with praise? Instead of just closing. And so the praise team's going to lead us in praise right now. And if you're here and you need prayer, please make your way to the front. Our praise team, our prayer teams, they're going to be praising and worshiping God. And as they do that as well, we want you to come up because guess what? We want freedom to come in your life. And so let's do that right now. Come on, it's a new day today. Let's believe these words today as we declare this as a testimony for what God is going to do. Come on. Goodbye yesterday. I'm living in the light of a new day. I won't waste another minute in my old ways. Praise the Lord, I've been born again. Goodbye yesterday. I'm living in the light of a new day. I won't waste another minute in my old ways. Praise the Lord, I've been born again. Again and again and again and again, you rescued me out of the mess I was in. You traded my sorrow for something to sing. Now I'm dancing on the grave that I once lived in. Goodbye, yesterday. I'm living in the light of a new day. I won't waste another minute in my old ways. Praise the Lord, I've been born again. Goodbye, yesterday. The upon me. I've got resurrection in my veins. Praise the Lord. I've been born again and again and again. You rescued me out of the mess. Come on. My sorrow for something to sing. Now I'm dancing on the grave that I once lived in. Again and again and again and again. You rescued me out of the mess I was in. You traded my sorrow. Now I'm dancing in the rain that I was yeah. I have decided to follow Jesus. The world behind the cross before, and I won't turn back. I have decided to follow Jesus. The world behind the cross. And 
again and again and again. You rescued me out of the mess I was in. You traded my sorrow for something to sing. Now I'm dancing on the grave that I once lived in. Again and again and again and again. You rescued me out of the mess I was in. You traded my sorrow. Come on. Now I'm dancing on the grave that I once lived in. Come on, who can praise? Praise the Lord. I've been born again. And praise the Lord. Dancing on the grave that I once lived in. Hey! Now I'm dancing on the grave that I once lived in. Come on, let's let loose right now in this moment. Let's believe we're, we're living in the new today. We're living in the freedom that Jesus brings. So come on, let's testify this today. On the grave that I once lived in. Dancing on the grave. 